this Sunday, following the Sunday when we celebrated the Feast of Epiphany, we are celebrating the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord. In the celebration of the liturgy, today marks the end of Christmas no? time officially, but at the same time, the beginning also of the ordinary time. And if we come to think of it, it's about the baptism of the Lord. And it's so essential and significant, very important, if we relate it to our own baptism. In fact, we should really call to mind, and even in our heart, the meaning, the value of the sacrament of baptism that we receive, which is so connected on this baptism of the Lord, but in a different meaning and significance on his part, because if we take baptism the way we understand it, that it's our redemption, we receive that sanctifying grace, we have been freed from original sin, and that we have that new life in God. Of course, no, we share his divinity, that baptismal character we call sanctifying grace, and adopted sons and daughters of God. In the Lord Jesus, he really did not need it because in the first place, he is God, he is the Son of God, he is the second person of the Blessed Trinity, he is the Savior, the Messiah, as John the Baptist would testify in the gospel that he is not the one, but the one who is coming and in the person of the Lord Jesus is the Savior. So, the way we understand baptism, it's not the same as what the Lord Jesus received because in reality, this baptism that we have in the gospel is a moment of manifestation of epiphany of who he is because with the presence practically the Holy Trinity you know, him being the son of God then the descent of the Holy Spirit in a form of a dove and of course the voice of the father you are my beloved son whom I am well pleased so that captures you know, the manifestation, the revelation of Jesus, who he is, and what's his mission into this world, that it's so clearly revealed in his baptism. But at the same time, it's also very important to us because, again, as I've said, it's so essentially connected to our baptism and what's the meaning and value of it in each and every one of us. Because by the grace also of the Holy Trinity, because remember, even in the mandate of the Lord, come or go to all nations as a fruit of his resurrection when he told his disciples, go to all the nations, baptizing them, making them disciples, and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But the grace that we receive, not only the faith, but being adopted sons and daughters of God, ears to his kingdom. And there's actually the beautiful words of St. Paul no? in the second reading in his letter to, to Titus when he said, When the kindness and generous love of God our Savior appeared not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This rebirth, of course, refers to baptism, that renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that we might be justified by His grace and become ears in the hope of eternal life. Words so beautiful and so profound because that's really the gift that we receive in baptism, not because we deserve or we are worthy of it, but by the mercy of God that we are being constituted as adopted sons and daughters, children of God, the Father sharing in His divinity, receiving that sanctifying grace that we are of the Lord and He is our Father and we are ears to His kingdom and we are part of the body of Christ, the church. So how great, how precious that gift we receive in the sacrament of baptism and that how, that's how important that's how valuable, that's how precious the gift of baptism that we receive. Because that's that baptismal character that we always have all throughout our life and not only in this world but beyond as we are ears of God's kingdom in heaven. Now, that's one part, actually, because even in the Lord Jesus, as I mentioned, and even in the celebration of the liturgy we have, as I've said, today marks the end of Christmas, but at the same time, the beginning of what we call ordinary time. And in the gospel, it's about the public life of the Lord Jesus, because it's the inauguration of his ministry, we call it the public life of the Lord when he began to proclaim the kingdom of God, baptizing people, healing the sick, and preaching and expelling demons, and ultimately, of course, with all those miracles and encounters we had with the people, revealing to one and all the mercy and the love and the compassion of God and ultimately on his sacrifice in his passion, death, and resurrection. And this is very important because, again, with that baptism that we receive, that dignity, that grace, that blessing that we receive, that very identity that we have, that we are all children of God, his sons and daughters, but at the same time, essentially connected and rooted to it is also our mission. That public life, you know, that witnessing that we are tasked to do as real children of God. That giving, you know, bringing the good news of salvation proclaiming and building up the kingdom of God, giving healing and comfort to those who are sick, to those who are hurt and in pain and suffering, giving hope to those who are feeling hopeless and dying and dead. And, of course, proclaiming the truth of the love and mercy of God to others. And that's always our task, our mission, that essentially flows from who we are and what we are as children of God. In other words, that we have to be consistent, really, in regards to our very life that we live and in our actions, not only in words, of course, but in deeds. And we can relate this to anything, actually, even in the celebration of 
the 500 years gifted to give. No? It's basically the same, gifted by this faith, which, of course, the introduction of Christianity, but in our Christian life, the sacrament of baptism. But again, as we are being gifted, we share, and not only in good times, but in bad, and in our experience these days, it's so true and relevant in these very challenging times when we are being tested by our faith. We know that, again, with this pandemic still going on and that uncertainty, that fear and worry, and that vulnerability that we all have because of what we are going through these days, and so many are suffering, not to mention the crisis, both uh, physically, economically, emotionally, and uh, again, with all this you know, in the society, in the government, in the church, the calamities, the disasters, name it, you know, all these things. Because supposedly, even in the midst of darkness, that's the promise. And also the message of God, even during the time of the Israelites in the Old Testament, you know, as proclaimed to us in the first reading in the book of Isaiah. But with the coming of the Lord Jesus, it's so concrete and real that in the midst of darkness, we have him as the light of the world. But at the same time, by being gifted and adapted into the family of God, we are also called to share that grace and blessing to others. Even in our unworthiness, even in our woundedness, yet we are gifted and blessed with the spiritual blessings that we receive. Because, again, not due to our worthiness that we deserve it, but because of the mercy of God in Jesus Christ, that we are ears in the hope to eternal life. And we pray, brothers and sisters, that, again, we should always be reminded of who we are, that importance, the value of our baptismal uh, character of who we are and our call to be faithful to who we are as children of God in whatever we do, wherever we are, whatever tasks and obligations that the Lord has entrusted to us. And we pray because, again, the presence of God, Him being our Father, and the Lord, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, is always and should always be in us and be upon us. So, with this in the holy sacrifice of the Mass, as we turn to Him in His most divine mercy, may in each and every one in our hearts and minds, really that divine mercy of the Lord touch our hearts so that we may be always inspired to live up to our identity and call as baptized children of God in this world that we live in the here and now of our lives. May the grace of the Holy Eucharist inspire us, strengthen us, enlighten us. Amen. Please stand. <clears throat>